Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about Revit materials. I will be walking you through how to install the missing contents, the basics of the materials and to understand a little bit how the settings really work. Stay tuned until the end of this video so we can bring you the most value. Let's talk a little bit about Revit materials. Before we jump into material settings and how to make different materials, let's start with how to install different material content. It depends whether you have Revit 2016 to Revit 2020 or 21 onwards because if you have 16 to 20, you need to hit Control Panel and Programs and Features and you need to come and find Autodesk Revit libraries and the year you're using. So there are five years available. What you need to do is you need to simply click on the year you would like Revit content to be installed, the materials to be installed and you go add or remove features. Once you click on the add or remove features, from here you can select the content packages you're looking for. So these are in English, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and South Asia, but as well you can find any other like English or like specific country content. So German, for example, Austria, Switzerland. For Revit 2021 content, you need to go in this link. We will be leaving this link in the description below so you can find and direct access to that link and you need to download one of the access files or multiple files depending on your needs be aware that they're a bit heavy so you need to make sure that you have enough space from your computer and once you download those files you double head to install the software um, install the content and locate it in this location so see program data autodesk let's jump into how to use materials properly in revit I'm using Revit 2021 and will be just opening a random project. In order to find the materials fastest and easiest way, I go to manage materials so I can hit the materials. The number one thing everyone is concerned, why do we have this yellow icon on the bottom left corner of the image? And this is because you need to update the preset in order to have a better visualization. In order to do that, simply you need to hit home a, um, AEC materials and from here for example if you find air you will see that there is an updated version of the air and if you upload it and you hit replace your air material will be replaced so you will be able to visualize air more properly uh, this is very important if you are using certain materials constantly and you want to visualize them right away be aware though every material has a identity graphics, appearance, physical and thermal. The most important things obviously you will be facing with is the identity, graphics and appearance and thermal if you are using materials for thermal reasons, so for energy analysis or any other purposes. We will come back to that later. Identity, this is one of the most important things, so depending on what kind of BIM requirements you have, you might need to input the material description and data, the graphics, the visualization part of the material, how would you like to see it in 2D, how would you like to see it in the surfaces, but this is not a rendering data, it's more like for the documentation and for the project workflow. The appearance is solely for um, realistic and representation, rendering. Therefore, it is, if you are going to render the project, you need to pay a close attention to the appearance as much as possible. If you see the air, it is a, you know like a different kind of material content. There is advanced highlight controls. So, and then if you, if I jump into for example different one, let's say wood. Um, I was I will just go in the let's say cherry, some kind of wood. You will see a different setup. This is the reason for that is that Revit understands that this is a wood and it allows different property options. So you need to find the closest one to your, your need and duplicate the material accordingly. So if you would like to create a new wood material, you need to find an existing wood and duplicate. In order to duplicate, you just right click and duplicate the material. The number one thing, a lot of people make mistake and you need to really pay attention before going and jumping into the details, you need to make sure that if you're using appearance and if you want to distinguish the both appearance, so I will just say Cherry uh, UK, and then I will may make a duplicate of the asset. So if I do a duplicate of the asset, if I change the, for example, the tent, the purple, 
this will remain the same. But if I do not do that, pay attention, pay close attention to what I'm doing right now. So I will go with red, or let's say red, and look at this. It will update the boat because the asset remains the same. So you need to really pay a close attention to this. Once you're done with the appearance, once you're done with the uh, your graphic data identity, now there are a little bit more information about the relief pattern and some of the tabs. And also if you click on the image, you'll be seeing extra details over here. And these details are how you would like to visualize the material in Revit. So would you like to do it in tile format? Would you like to do it in a, a holistic format? Uh, what is the scale you are looking for? And what is the position, how you want to position it properly? This is really important if you are doing realistic models. And then if you drop this down, you will see it, how it looks, depending on your you know, like stain on the color. So if you don't want any stain, you can just remove the stain and it will be showing the sol solely the material itself. A, I mean, you might be thinking, okay, why it is not really showing the material properly. It is showing as if it was a gray rather than a brownish. And this is because of its settings. And we will be doing more settings option and going diving into details in a part two. If you're interested in learning more about how to change settings, how to have a greater control on the materials and the visualization part of it, please don't forget to subscribe and turn the notification bell on because in the next video we'll be covering part two and diving in further into the material settings in order to give you more data. However, before I conclude, there's one more thing I would like to show, which is a thermal. And this thermal is an amazing thing because if I go on a wall tool and a random wall, I will just select multiple materials here and each material will have a different thermal data. And then you can see that depending on the thickness and depending on thermal data, I will be actually getting resistance. And that's amazing. So I'm getting a thermal mass and a resistance. If I divide one over resistance, I get the U value. So that's amazing output just by inputting the thermal data to thickness and you already have this data into your project. Please don't forget to like if you like this video and don't forget to comment below if you'd like to see similar videos or a little bit additional content or if you have any questions about the materials, I will be happy to cover it in the next parts of the material contents.